In most cases, you wouldn't want your meat to be small, but ASRock actually encourages small meat. Meet the desk meat. This specifically is the X600 desk meat that is ready for AM5. It's compact and fitted GPU in a modern AM5 processor, but should you pick it up? We'll talk about it after we're from today's sponsor. Listen, building a gaming PC is only part of the process. Once you finish planning your perfect gaming PC build to get the best price and performance, you need to make sure to install and activate Windows 11 with today's video sponsor, GVG Mall. Use our link in the description down below to find the Windows 11 key. Use code TB20 on checkout to save even more money upping your price to performance game. Then you'll get a copy of the key sent straight to you. Take that key, throw it into a Windows 11 PC of your choice during the install process or after the install is done, and boom, you now have an activated Windows 11 with access of all the features it has to offer. Use our link down below and use code TB20 on checkout and you'll save some money on your Windows activation. Big thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the video, shall we? So guys, Matt is currently taking this PC apart, which by the way is so freaking easy, but this is the DeskMeet X600 and it's a little mini PC that comes with the motherboard. It comes with an IO shield, comes with a case, and it comes with a power supply for 200 bucks. And we've seen these before. We're no strangers to the DeskMeet here on the channel. We've Take it. We're no strangers to meet here. We have seen the AM4 version, and there is an Intel version that's 12 gen. I think that's also the X600 or the X300. I can't remember the specific model, but we've seen a bunch of these before. And this model, again, is AM5, so we're very excited about it, but nothing's really changed other than the fact the motherboard is different. And you'll see some B-roll on screen here of us doing the install and everything. But 500 watt power supply comes with, solid. The case, solid. It's mini ITX, and it comes with a custom mini ITX board. They label it as like an X600 board, which doesn't really disclose what the chipset is. For $200, it's a really easy way to build a mini ITX PC and let's talk about what we put inside ours. So what we put inside of our meat starts with the AMD Ryzen 5 7500 F6 core 12 thread coming in at 120 bucks on AliExpress. And now obviously, like I said earlier, this is a combo because we actually got the X600 desk meat. We also got the X600 motherboard that comes inside, which is probably something like an A620 with Wi-Fi, but it does have DDR5 support. It has Gen 5 support. So it's a really decent board. And it comes with a channel well 500 watt power supply. So like I said, around two to 220 bucks, you can find your meat on Newegg. Um, you can also check like some other retailers like Amazon and eBay as well. Now, of course, once you buy the combo, there's still is a little bit of DIY that you have to do with your meat. Number one, you have to buy a Gen 4 SSD. You could go Gen 3, but honestly, with these awesome Gen 4 and Gen 5 support, why go Gen 3 when you can pay 59 bucks for the Team Group MP44L? And then coming in at 88 bucks, we got G Skill Flare X5, 32 gigs, DDR5, 6000 megahertz, CL36. 88 bucks is pretty good for some dual channel DDR5 like that. Now for the GPU, I was considering something like an RTX 3060 or like the inevitable RTX 5060, but that's not out yet and the 3060 not enough power. So we decided to meet in the middle with this RTX 4060. Specifically, this is like an OEM model we picked up off of eBay. I will say we paid a bit of a premium, around 320 bucks for it. But again, the 4060 is getting a bit expensive. Realistically, a compact two fan card would work inside this build as well. You just gotta do a little bit of deal hunting and make sure you find one that fits inside this case. What, what case is it? <laughs> the desk meat. And lastly, we'll touch on the cooler later on in today's video, but we did go with the Wraith Stealth Cooler for our 7500F, which originally I was gonna use a Thermoite low profile cooler to cool it, uh, but the mounting hardware wasn't the right mounting hardware for AM5, so we had to audible to the Wraith Stealth Cooler, but you'll see throughout the testing that we would really recommend some sort of low profile CPU cooler to get maximum temperature performance with this configuration, but again, we'll talk more about it during the benchmarks. But all in all, $850 for a very solid piece of meat. I think the performance could be <laughs> I think the performance is gonna be really good for the price, but we gotta test it for you guys. I know you're all probably wondering about those thermals. Can we keep the meat cool? Well, time to test it and find out. <laughs> all right, guys, we are on the desk meet playing some Marvel Rivals, and we're currently at 1080p. We are using some upscaling, just set to quality. Um, we're running medium settings. We do have uh, just slow, slow ball. <laughs> Screen space, global illumination, ray tracing on. And this is looking pretty good so far. The main thing we're we'll gonna be looking at here is the temperatures of the 7500F, and they're okay. Uh, we'll run OCCT at the very end for an extended period and see what our average temperatures are. Um, Gaming-wise, this is perfectly fine for 7000 series, but it is a bit warmer than I would like to see. Um, realistically, you could probably improve those if you do get an actual aftermarket low-profile cooler instead of the one that we're using, which is the Stealth Cooler. You could probably get a few more degrees out of it. Um, but this is a small four-factor build, and I will say this was originally built for AM4 and older Intel in mind, AM5 you know, it's more power upgrade. Can't kill anyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get away from me. Please, 
So uh, just for fun, guys, by the way, I turned off um, upscaling, so now we're just running native 1080p. Uh, I mean, we, we did drop a good, like, what, 30, 40 FPS. Yeah. We popping, we popping. Oh, again! Oh, oh no. Awkward. Oh! No! Dude, I freaking suck. We didn't win Marvel Rivals, but I gotta say, the mini PC, um, I mean, it, it did really good. It definitely seems like, you know, with the whole Gen 5 support and all the other good stuff, I don't think this PC is gonna be a single issue. Next game! Okay, PC gamers, we are in Spider-Man 2. You know that Spider-Man that was in Jackson's game? Yeah, this is what Spider-Man went to do. He left the game and started playing the real Spider-Man. Uh, so we're currently running uh, 1080p, no upscaling on high settings, and we're getting 60 FPS. I mean, that is 100% the target with a graphics card like this. As I swing around here, we're dipping slightly into the 50s, but that's not too bad. Um, we'll go ahead and see if we can find some crime. Oh, more branding, Jesus Christ. I really wanted to focus on AAA titles in this um, PC configuration, because I feel like that would be the best use case of this, is like a little home theater PC. Um, you know, Bazite is an option on something like this. And uh, with it being small form factor build, definitely a cool setup that we could do. Uh, for higher end games like this, and obviously your normal titles like Fortnite and stuff like that are gonna run just fine with that 7500F. Pop, 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 pop. And a boom. A bing and a bang and a boom. We'll mess around with DLSS as well here and see what we get afterwards, because I will say in a game like this, I am more than okay with DLSS. 1080p, I mean, you know, it is pushing it, but it's not gonna be that awful, and it should yield us a bit more performance. Hmm. Wait, did you just kill me? Oh my god, I actually died in this? <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's perfect time for us to switch on DLSS. Normally we're running DLSS and you have uh, a solid CPU like the 7500F, which should get pretty good results. And um, yeah, just like Rivals, now we're not gonna go below probably the 80s? Oh, oh, they're going to the 70s. I was like, in the 80s? But no, I mean, this will definitely be above 60 for sure. And I will say it's not too bad. I mean, it doesn't look like I'm seeing much visualization issues doing this. Um, and that 4060 is doing pretty good. Um, with this configuration, you could obviously find any single fan cards you want to. That's the best part about this. There are some two fans that might fit, like some of those smaller, like um, if, thing off the top of my head, like those Zotac 1660 Supers, if you want to go more budget. Something like that would be good. But if you're going to AM5, you might as well go with like a 40 series GPU if you can, if you can find one. So, hey, all in all, this is looking really good. Oh, look at that. The acrobatics are insane. Uh, it's looking really good, but let's really stress this thing. We'll run OCCT to the max temp is, see if there's any down clocking with that 7500F under full load. Um, and then we'll also run some other games to fully stress it. But hey, really excited to see a new desk meet that is AM5. And um, let's go ahead and run those other benchmarks and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the meat, and not only did the temp stay really cool in that meat, but also it was pretty small, but it performed really well. I'm so sorry, guys, but we're just gonna keep going with this at this point. Uh, let's talk about some other benchmarks, shall we? Uh, we ran Wukong, Black Myth Wukong, 1080p medium settings with no upscaling, got an average of 69 FPS, a max of 85, a minimum of 19. We ran CS2, 1080p low settings, got an average of 524 FPS with a 1% low of 163. Elder Scrolls Oblivion Remastered, 1080p, medium settings, native, no upscaling, got 60 FPS with a few dips here and there. And that OCCT benchmark that we mentioned, we ran for an hour using a CPU and RAM stress test. The CPU did downclock a little bit and we got a max CPU temp of 90 degrees Celsius with an average of 89. I would recommend some sort of thermal right low profile cooler to probably get even more performance. The race delt is fine, but a low profile cooler probably do better inside of this meat. And then for 3D Mark, we got a score of 10,510, which is an eight cent per point. And for a mini ITX PC, that's actually really good. So all in all, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and hopefully you made it to the end of this video with all our great comments we made on the Desk Meat PC. It's great meat, guys. If you want to build this yourself, check the link's description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. Let us know what you think of this PC down below. Are you picking one up? And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. All right, guys, this desk meet will be for sale at PCBros.Tech, and we got even smaller PCs. If you're into that, we also have way larger PCs, too. PCBros.Tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code TOASTYBROS on checkout. You'll save 3% on your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.